I want to bring in economist Stephen Moore to talk more about those differences. Hi, Steve. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, Clara. Good to be with you. Now, California did see the largest increase in unemployment claims last week. Nearly 50,000 new claims filed in the state. Governor Gavin Newsom now slowing the Golden State's reopening. Some Republican governors, though, are also pausing their plans, Florida and Texas, namely. What does this data show us about the economic recovery of red states versus blue states? What are the economic implications of slowing efforts to reopen? So you said it very well at the outset that we're seeing a bifurcated recovery right now in the United States. Red states are doing pretty well, especially the mountain states and the states in the south, states like Georgia and Florida and South Carolina and Tennessee and Texas and, and states like Montana, Utah, Arizona, doing very well and they're, they're kind of getting back to normal. Uh, and then you have these states like California, New York, Connecticut, my home state of Illinois, which are just a disaster area because they've stayed locked out. Now, the complication to this story, of course, is that now you're seeing a rise in some of the caseloads in some of these uh, uh, states that I just mentioned, some of these uh, Republican states like Texas and, and Arizona and Florida. And so we'll see how these states adapt to those higher numbers. My advice to those governors, and I talk to them, is make sure you don't do what New York did, because New York made catastrophic mistakes. Make sure you keep your nursing home safe and your seniors safe, uh, because those are the vulnerable populations. As we look at this uh, pandemic and the rising number of cases, even with you know a lower death rate, it is becoming more likely that there will be another round of relief from the federal government. What do you think should be included in that legislation? Well, I think the most important thing is anything that stimulates getting people back to work. You know, you mentioned those unemployment numbers; they're still so high, and we have at least 20 to 25 million. Americans that are employed today. That's a lot of Americans. So we have to incentivize businesses to hire and workers to get back on the job. And the perfect way to do that, of course, would be to reduce the payroll tax and just suspend it for the rest of the year. It's something Donald Trump wants to do. It's something Larry Kudlow has talked about. Republicans on Capitol Hill are very much in favor of that idea. Uh, it is not a Nancy Pelosi's bill in the House. So there probably will be a uh, confrontation on that. But I'll say one other thing. The worst possible thing we could do right now, uh, Greta, would be to, uh, to extend those unemployment benefits that are paying about three-fourths of all workers more money to stay unemployed than to go back to work. We estimate that would lead to 10 million fewer jobs for the rest of the year if we did that. It's been a pretty turbulent week on Wall Street and a turbulent day up and down throughout the day today as investors you know, do try to gauge the impact of all of this data coming out about the coronavirus. But bank stocks rallied pretty big today after a regulation rollback from the Federal Deposit Insurance Commission and you know that drove the market higher overall. That move does come even amid this deep financial crisis caused by the pandemic. Explain what that move will do for U.S. banks and is it a sign that federal officials are confident the recovery from this crisis will be quicker than the recovery from the last recession? Boy, that's a great question, too. Uh, I think the reason these numbers uh, were important and the actions today by the federal government are, are um, moved the market is that you mentioned the last recession we had in 2008 and 2009. Remember, that was a financial crisis, and it was the banks that really failed us. This time around, it's it's the it's the pandemic. It's in retail. It's in construction. It's the real economy that's that's really taken a tumble. But the the good news is the financial sector has remained healthy, and I believe there's good reason to think that that will continue. I mean, God forbid that we see this contamination hit the financial sector, but right now it doesn't look like it will. I'm not saying we're out of the woods here, uh, Greta. I mean, we're in a very dicey economic situation right now. But that was good news today, and that's why the markets responded so positively at the end of the day. And real quickly, you know, looking forward to the future, as the number of cases does continue to rise and governors try to gauge what they can and can't do to keep the economy open, but also keep their residents safe in their states, what are you expecting to see with the recovery? When could we see, uh, you know, consumer activity returning to normal? We're getting back on track. I think the, the events of the last seven or eight days have been a setback because of these increase in, uh, in cases and Americans are afraid again. And you know, this is a fear factor we're up against right now and it's a perception factor. Americans see these numbers of rising cases and they understandably get afraid. I, I think the numbers are a little bit exaggerated in the sense that more of the people are getting coronavirus are younger people who are much less susceptible to get sick. 
but uh, it, re it presents a new challenge. Like we're going to be like this now for the next three months, I think, where you're going to have some good days and some bad days. You, you know, you you talked about the stock market being a real roller coaster ride. We'll get used to it, Greta, because I think we're going to see that for months to come. All right, economist Stephen Moore joining us to discuss the U.S. economy amid the coronavirus pandemic. Thanks so much for coming on the show today, Steve. Thank you. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.